Yo, what is going on? And welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. I'm Ramsey Abushala, editor of UrbanPitch.com, co-executive directors of Vibes back in the house. We're, we're back in the home home base. We had a little road trip uh, <laughs> down, down the street to, to Tony's uh, studio, Julio Monterosa, Bridget Flores. What's going on, y'all? What up? We back home. Back home with a special guest? <laughs> Back home with a special guest. Bam, 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 bam. Special guest host this time. We had her as and a guest. And in person. And in person, yeah, yeah. Well, she was in person last time, too. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I was here. Yeah, she, she I mean, uh, we had her on as a guest. We interviewed her last time. Now she's on as a guest host. She's going to be giving some perspective, some insight um, on the NWSL season so far. Jessica Black, yeah. welcome back. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Every time, I, well, this is only my second time being here, but it's like you guys turn on the camera and I'm like, it just feels like we're chit chatting like friends. Right. I love that vibe, guys. That's the best I love vibe. That vibe. That's, that's, that's what we want to hear. I'm like, are we actually recording right now? Because like nobody's <laughs> the like camera's sitting on? up all straight. Right. I like well, love it. Well, I don't know. Are we recording? Uh, yeah, are we <laughs> <laughs> Did you press the button, Roy? <laughs> Uh, too soon, too soon. It, it just okay. happened last week. It's okay. We'll, we'll move on. We all make mistakes. Um, I made mistakes uh, several times as well. It happens. So. We, we hold each other accountable. Yeah, that's, so. that's, 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 yeah. So, um, but that's exactly the vibe that we go for um, when it comes to, to this. Sometimes, um, you know, the, the guests pick up on it. Sometimes they don't. And by the end of it, I feel like, you know, um, they feel like it's, it's, it's a conversation, not as much an interview, you know. So yeah, right. back the second time. A little yeah. more comfortable, maybe, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. um, so we're glad to have you. We're glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Let's talk about some NWSL. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk NWSL because now we're, is it four weeks into the season? Four weeks. Um, yeah, we're going into uh, four. Little four. break this weekend for the uh, She Believes Cup international break um, all around. I think there's some other stuff going on um, elsewhere. Um, so we thought that it would be a good time, you know, with, with the, the break. We're recording this before the weekend. Um, we can just talk about the first four weeks because I feel like it's been a flurry. It's been a, a whirlwind. We 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 didn't really preview the season. Um, we we touched on it a little bit um, on the site. We had a couple of, of of written articles, but now we get to talk about it because I think there's a lot of expectations going into the season. Obviously, two new. Um, uh, uh, expansion teams, new stadiums in, in, in Kansas City. Um, the hype, I feel like, was, was a little bit bigger. What, what is your, your guys' uh, thoughts on the start to the year so far in the first four weeks? Jessica, kick it That's, off. I mean, NWSL is so back. It's so <clears throat> back, and I feel like um, it's bigger and better than ever. There's so many good things happening in the NWSL. I think both expansion sides have brought good things. Bay FC and Utah have brought amazing vibes so far and the viewership is up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can yeah. actually really see people in the stands. I mean, some of like Bay FC's opener, insane. Yeah. Everything looked amazing. Um, I was at the opener uh, for Angel City and Bay FC. It was full. And, you know, the earlier iterations of the women's league, sometimes stadiums would be almost empty. Mm -hmm. So we're making moves. Um, we love the kits. You know, we can talk about that too yeah. as well. Yeah, I think yeah, some yeah. of the kits actually were really good and I'm not a big Nike kit person. Sometimes I think they can be a little stale. No offense, Nike, you know. Do better. Um, if you, if you want to throw the check, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> if you need some help with some des designs, call your girl because sometimes it's a little stale, but you did good on the NWSL kits. And so I think it's been a good start so far. Um, maybe a better start for some teams mm -hmm. than others, mm -hmm. you know, so we can talk about all of that. Yeah. What do yeah. you guys think? Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. MLB is here and the NBA and NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today to stay updated on all the action and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. I was just going to go off of what you were talking about. We were at the home opener for Angel City as well. Yeah. Great, amazing. Love that this is the third home opener for them and we've been to all three. Mm -hmm. Every home opener has been full, has brought all the yeah. energy, the fans show up, they show out. And just like the diversity from like every type of fan that you can think of was there, you know, like families out here with their full, you know, kits on, the hats, there's babies, there's newborns, like the the family vibe is definitely up there but just like the energy and the support and the cheering um it, it feels good but for me i was really excited to see bay fc kick off their first game as an expansion mm -hmm. team um i'm not gonna lie like I, i'm a big angel city fan um but i was kind of i was i was pretty excited to see bay fc uh, kick off just because 
everything that they did before the season started just felt right like they were mm. you know marking off all the checks they were they they did well with learning from what other teams have done done in the past and the teams that came before them so um i think that that's gonna be a really cool team to see grow and and you know take their journey off to whatever they become um sucks that angel city didn't get the the dub but there was a They've few players a <laughs> and yet still um <laughs> But they do have a lot of players that they have new and signed in and that are back from injuries that we're really excited to see, you know, take off their career and excited for the young ones in general and all of NWSL. I feel like yeah. that's one yeah. of the biggest things as well. Yeah, the kids, <clears throat> the kids are making moves. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, um, b back to what you said about Bay FC, I think the last time we spoke about it um, on one of the episodes, you even said something like, Yo, I might be a, a, a Bay FC fan. Hey, like, I said, don't. I said, <laughs> I, I might be catching feelings for Bay FC. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't really, I don't blame you because everybody that's there, obviously, like from the ownership group and everybody that started it is great. Uh, the branding, mm -hmm. I feel like needs to be spoken about because I have one friend that doesn't like the vibes of like the varsity jacket and stuff, but I think it looks That's freaking fine. clean. Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I was so and, swaggy, and they made it like really exclusive just for the players, right. right? So that when they eventually decide to sell some, we're gonna all People want it. Yeah. Um, and it's just everything. Like, I love that they brought in Jen Beatty for like experience. They brought in like Ashwala who is a superstar she's yeah. six-time african footballer of the year mm -hmm. is there uh dana and she came from barca <laughs> yeah she came from barca dana who if you don't know get to know her the number 10 Fire. she is an amazing player and a great person so they're doing it right mm -hmm. and i'm just hoping that the the rivalry starts up between angel city and bay because mm -hmm. it's hard to manufacture one mm -hmm. you have to have that bad blood mm -hmm. and like it's not like i want them fighting but right. i want a little fire hype it up yeah, you know I like north little... cal versus soul cal yeah, like, like show i need that, love. that i need that <laughs> yeah. so hopefully that comes over yeah. time too yeah and the the la san diego rivalry is kind of there but i feel like san diego's too nice like every time i go to san diego i like it's great. It's a beautiful city. My brother lives there. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I go there not, I mean, not, not so often, but you know, I go there, you know, f a few times a year and there's just something off. Like there's no edge. Like everything mm -hmm. is just so, you know, like, nice, relax, nice. Chill. Like, dude. like, what's up, man? <laughs> you know, like people are walking around in flip flops. Like I need, I, I need some edge. That. And, no. <laughs> um, the, the rivalry between LA and, and San Diego on the field was there. Um, but I feel like LA and Bay, especially with the LA Bay area, you know, rivalry mm -hmm. going like outside of soccer and just in sports in general like there's a lot more room there to have like some kind of like for it to be a little bit more like more like, um, true, yeah, more fire right, like you know like yeah animosity. it needs to come like, yeah you know, like yeah. there needs to be some yeah some of that. that's and, true because i didn't feel any of that in the stadium at the game itself i feel like if anything everyone was super welcoming to bay fc because it was their <laughs> first game in the league and their first time on the pitch as a whole team um, but something I did want to talk about as well for Bay FC was Dana and um, Oshuala's dynamic. Mm. Oh, my God. They are, I'm telling you, like, I don't know, something about just yeah. Bay FC and, like, what they're building is, like, it's very eye-catching. And yeah. from the varsity jackets to the team, to the players, to the people they're signed, um, yeah, those varsity jackets are hard. I even think they're the even varsity better. Jackets, like, I saw some of the fans that were here, and even their fan gear. I was like, yeah, like yeah. that t-shirt with the, with the big guys, B on it. Hard. Like, it's and like the old it's English. Good. Yeah, with the oh, orange, like yes. the orange accent. Yeah, they did the it navy. right. Like, yeah. it, it, it does look good. And but that is to say, like Angel City, like that their colors, their their color scheme, their merch mm -hmm. is oh, on yeah. point as on well. Board. Super but, LA, and that's the thing behind it too. It's like Angel City's design and, and like what their merch is very la and bays is very mm. bay area agreed agreed 100 percent um but yeah you you know you mentioned ashwala and dana and they do have a style of play that you can see that's starting to form mm -hmm. um you didn't see it a lot in the in the first game yeah. um i think because it was like just like their first game but you can see they're building and they only have three points mm -hmm. um so it's not like they're running away with it or anything like that but you can see an identity i wanted to ask you know do you guys feel like you're seeing an identity from Angel City yet, third year in? You know, listen, if I'm beyond the pod, we're going to have some hard conversations, yeah, okay? Right, right, right. We, we love one. Angel City, but look, listen, sometimes love comes with a little bit of, you know, are we doing the right things? And so um, there, I've, I've spoken to some Angel City fans, and, you know, you love the club. There's great players. 
you have star quality in that side, you have great young talent, but is the style of play coming through? Is the progression there? There, I, I don't want to give them excuses because it's, it's their like, third year. It's their third year, but I don't know if there's been a lot of continuity, um, and uh, you know, new coach, a lot of new players. You know, the midfield is is kind of almost uh, entirely new midfield this year compared to last year. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think the back line is solid. Back line. I mean, up there with, you know, I mean, the center back pairings, you know, Paige Nielsen, who we had on the podcast a couple weeks ago, check that out. Uh, Sarah Gordon, also, also. we had on the podcast. Um, <laughs> check that out. Um, <laughs> that's one of the best center back pairings. And I'm not just saying that um, no, because I'm an Angel City fan are. because, they're you know, we've had a chance. I, they, I mean, that first game, I mean, I see that Oshawala, one of the best players in the world. Sarah Gordon was right there with her step mm -hmm. for step. Oh, she mm -hmm. had her clamp. And yeah, Oshawala, yeah. Oshawala, like, scored a goal, but that wasn't Sarah Gordon's fault. It was, you know, bad, the bad pass and mistake right. that, you know, yeah. in, the, in the final third. Um, but Sarah Gordon had her, like, in her pocket for the most oh, yeah. part. And, you know, she ran her down a couple times. There's a couple, you know, like, long balls to her. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, running. The, and I was holding my breath. And then all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, angle Sarah. pursuit from Sarah is, is, mm -hmm. is crazy. So the back line, I think, even last year is, is solid. I really like that. Emma Vignola and um, uh, Allie Riley, you know. Um, and then hopefully we get to see more Giselle Thompson. Hopefully she, she comes back from her. She has uh, some a leg injury. I don't know how yeah. serious that is. Um, it's the midfield and then the forward three that I, I, we just haven't ever been able to have any kind of consistent possession with the ball. And yeah. that, hurts, that hurts us. Even when we take the lead, we can't hold the lead because we can't hold on to the ball. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I, you know, Paige was talking about Becky kind of trying to instill her, her uh, values and her overall vision for what the team is in the off season and how it was so competitive. And I think it's going to take some time. There's been flashes of like, you know, this is a good team. There's a lot of talent. I mean, you know, by all means, it's not a talent issue. I don't think it's a talent issue. I think it's just getting these players to play together under a certain, you know, set of, you know, goals or check checklists of like, this is how we're going to play. This is what we're going to do because I think that's been the number one. Like, I, I think you brought that up. Yeah. first because that's been like what is this team what's the identity of yeah. what we're doing on because mm -hmm. the identity of angel city off the pitch is very clear very right? yes right. it's yeah. very yeah. very clear we know what angel city is about inclusivity community all that kind of stuff fun the vibes are great lots of talent it's just about like putting that all together and seeing it out there on the pitch we haven't actually seen a lot of messiah yet we haven't seen a lot of if anything of Rocky and I think those two players yeah. are obviously going to add a lot and then you have you know young players like Kennedy Fuller who I mean <laughs> at what 17 yeah. coming in and playing her first game Play I mean like well done all, like all, like starting she started all three matches yeah um mm -hmm. I, her first like touch on the ball against Bay, I was like, "Yo, she she can play yeah, like she you know can. she bodied she, she can. bodied someone off the ball she can. Like, you know I was like okay like you know like let's go like but I mean to entrust that m amount of minutes to a 17 year old there's always going to be ups and downs Agreed. and i think she's shown promise there's she's shown her like her age as well um but i think rocky with i think she had a concussion yeah. um so that was tough um those are always hit and miss with um the the, the timetables but she came back against uh, kansas city scored a goal that shouldn't have been called offside um but you know whatever um <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to see Rocky, especially, and and then Messiah. Like we we had a conversation about this before we started. Like we got her; she's exciting, mm -hmm. you know, dynamic, mm -hmm. like striker that can score goals, which is what we need to do. And it's, we've struggled to do that. Um, why like, put put her in? Like I get Sydney Rulour is a, a legend. She's I mean her contribution to the game. Like we don't have to we don't have to you know Question preface it, that. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. but. Find a way to either play two strikers or find a, like a mix to get Messiah more minutes because that's why we brought her in. She's young, she's dynamic, she's exciting. What she did in Orlando is, you know, I think nine or ten goals last year. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as a rookie, like, I try, I'm trying to see more of that. And I, I think it's a long season. First three games were not ideal. You know, one point from those three games is not, you know, I don't think anyone had that in, in, in mind. But I, I'm going to continue to have – some sort of optimism because this is a historically historically two seasons uh, uh, <laughs> historically. slow starting team <laughs> and they you know even their first year they won the first 
first match or first few like I, I actually I take that back they started off really well and then Christian Press got hurt and then all went down the drain last year they got off to a slow start and turned things around so historically for one year they're a slow starting team so <laughs> yeah it, yeah I agree did you want to say something um no I was just gonna say with Messiah I same thing I want to see more of her I think we should see more of her and then at the same time, we also can't put too much pressure on, on, and expectations on the young players either. You know what I mean? Like I think that there is something missing on the pitch. Don't know, on the pitch. Don't know what it is, but I feel like our veterans have to come up and kind of like it's kind of like what Paige was saying last time when we had her. She was talking about how like she brings a certain energy and like um, leadership that she knows. Um, is necessary and is required for the team and I think that you see that when she's playing like when we were at the home opener I was watching her play and she brought exactly that essence that she was talking about on the on the podcast like you could tell that's her that's who she is mm -hmm. I feel like if everyone on the team can kind of like replicate that in some way like or even show up like even 50 percent of what she's doing I think that can change I think the dynamic within them as a team on the pitch is is something that's struggling and then of course um adding in the player the younger players into that is the other additional you know obstacle mm -hmm. that they have to overcome but like you said we're only what four, going into four games yeah. of the season things can change hopefully they learn from everything that's happening now so that by mid-season closer to playoffs things are on a different level yeah, things definitely take time. And so I'm not panicking, mm -hmm. but I am noticing. Concerned. Concerned. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. just like, okay, I'm noticing some things, some some patterns, but you have to let players get into their into their groove and stuff like that. So in Becky, we trust. We will, you know, we'll just keep it posted for now. I did want to ask you guys about Portland, though. Alarm yeah. bells ringing for them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they've, they're have they a team that historically has done well, has kind of been the standard of the mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. They are – near the bottom somewhere yeah. I, think I think they only have one point too. i think they they're one they're one above angel city yeah but exactly they still have the same amount of points they might have a better goal differential or, or something Possibly. because they've only taken one point they've had a tough schedule uh, i think they played um gotham and then kansas city as well so mm. two of the better teams yeah. in, in the league but that's a team that's always good like i feel like portland mm -hmm. is all i mean any you team with sophia <laughs> smith on it like is just Squad. automatically dangerous yeah um I think it's that's another case of it's still kind of too early to tell. There was a little bit of shuffling in the off in the off season, um, so I mean obviously losing Crystal Dunn's is is a big deal. Um, so I, I don't know, like it's 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 that, so early that you don't want to <laughs> put too much mustard on it. I right. feel like that's what it is. It's like it's only been three games, so do you panic or do you not? I just. You do watch Portland, you're like, okay, there's definitely something different here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you just would imagine that with all the talent that they have, because even though they lost Crystal Dunn, they still have they, – they replaced Rocky with Jesse Fleming, mm -hmm. who is very experienced player, came from Chelsea, right. Canadian international. She shouldn't – no reason to worry there. Sam Coffey, one of the best number yeah. sixes yeah. on the planet. You have Moultrie Scored there. A banger, banger of a goal last week. Exactly. Yeah. Morgan Weaver, Sophia Smith. So you yeah. would imagine – that they would get it together. But if we get like a couple more games in and they're still not cooking, mm -hmm. we'll have to ask some questions, mm -hmm. right? And you can't always rely upon Sophia. Yeah. First two games, it does feel like it's kind of like a little bit of like a kick it to her and let's see what happens. Right, right, so right. yeah, we have to see how that one you know, yeah. develops. I think if anything, rather than relying on Sophia, they have to get to Sophia's level mm. so that they can kind of like optimize and just be able to like execute as a team that everyone knows them for but if we're talking about portland and where they're at right now if we're talking about angel city and where they're at right now we also can talk about the teams that are at the top right Let's do it, yeah. <laughs> and consider the fact that like just as much as we see some teams fumbling we also see some teams like picking it up and killing mm -hmm. it like kansas city um chicago chicago yeah you yeah know? i think chicago is surprising to me because that recent years haven't been great. Um, obviously, have, getting Mal, Mal back mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that's huge. Um, but like, I don't, I don't think anyone saw this coming into the the season. Um, but like we said, with the other two teams, it's the same. With it's still early. They got off to a good start. Angel City's going to go to Chicago um, after the break. To, to so I'm excited to watch that because I feel like that will be a good. 
uh, measuring stick to see a what both teams are mm-hmm. Right, right, yeah. to see, you know, okay, this is, you know, Kansas City, Chicago back-to-back, you know, two teams off to hot starts. How yeah. can we, you know, we maybe have a break to, we, uh, have a break to, <laughs> to kind of revent, uh, like, you know, retool and, and adjust. And so I'm excited to see that game. Kansas City, to me, is also a big surprise. I think um, uh, Pringin Choinga, like, she, like, every time I feel like she touched the ball, it was like I was – Holding, holding my breath, breath. Yeah. like she ate, yeah. like i was saying how strong our back line is she made them look like they were Baller. JV, you know like Little, it was yeah she's very like just su- super dynamic she was involved in almost every like important play mm-hmm. in the game and mm-hmm. bringing someone of that talent it's like why like if they can bring her in like why can't we bring players in that, yeah. that caliber so a little bit of, of jealousy when watching her play because it's like She's a great player. I thought we had a good off season, but you know that's one that slipped under my radar. To be honest, like I didn't, I wasn't like, okay, this is a player to watch. Um, yeah. And now, like since she made her debut, I was watching that game as well. I think she came on at halftime, or she came in later in the game, and she automatically turned things around for for Kansas City. Them playing in a new stadium also helps. I feel like that's giving them energy. Yeah, yeah of course, 100%. that gives you vibes. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Can you imagine yeah. that you're just like you're showing up at your stadium, like built for built your team. for your team, yeah. a women's. Yeah soccer team Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and to have so much support back that up and and even just like you know like not just fans but like you know fans that are celebrities and fans that Mm -hmm. are like you know at at the top like chanting and like cheering you on wanting you to win and just even where the stadium is built at that is such a sick like location yeah Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you hear the freaking boat thing (laughs) when they score it's so crazy it's so sick yeah yeah i mean kansas city scored like the most goals i think they scored 11 goals already this season um they're just exciting to watch and for them to have finished like second bottom last season Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. to be where they are now i know it's early (laughs) but they look good. Yeah. They look and, good. Yeah. Right. Some of their signings have been really fun to watch. Bia, in particular, for me, mm-hmm. has been very, like, very, very good. Uh, she gave Sarah Gordon a, a tough time, mm-hmm. and so did, like you said, Chewinga. So Kansas City is an interesting one. I think that they're obviously setting the standard, you know, right. with, like you said, like the new complex that's built specifically for women's athletes and women's sports, which is, which is crazy. Let's see if the vibes even things out or not, you know, right. once we get further on in the season. But something tells me that Kansas City might stick. Mm-hmm. They have enough quality in that team. Levanta's there as well. Yeah. Uh, Di Bernardo. They have mm-hmm. so much quality. So well done, Kansas City. Um, you're looking good, girl. And yeah. They brought in, they brought <laughs> in, like, the coaching. Like, to me, when they they, they announced, like, okay, Vlad Andonovsky's going to come in, Freya Coombs is going to come in. I was like, yo, this is, like, island of misfit toys that they're bringing in. You know, two people coming off of, like, pretty – like Rough. high highly covered like struggles mm-hmm. like from mm-hmm. Freya with Angel City and then Vlaka with the obviously the women's national team crashing out in the World Cup a lot of people I think blamed Vlatko for the and I think a lot of it like fell on him like lack of subs uninspired formations you know just a lot of that but now coming back he's had always had a lot of success at the club level, like even before he was at Kansas City yeah. um, in the previous, uh, I forget the, the the team name that, that they had before, um, not the Spirit, I, I don't remember, but he was with Kansas City before and he he led them to a NWSL title. Um, so he's had success and I think maybe it just didn't translate to the, the national team. At the, or there's something that clicked because um, that team compared to the, the national team, like it's like they're playing exciting soccer so yeah um i feel like it's just different though like national team like international soccer is so different than mm-hmm. club and so it's just it's mm-hmm. i feel like yeah it was tough for vladko like it definitely didn't work out for the u.s women but he's a good club coach and he, his his ideas are getting across quickly because that's his vibe like that's that's what he, he's known for yeah. like he's known for the club vibe so yeah, I think he's doing a good job. And I know some people are like, U.S. women's national team fans can be incredibly brutal. And sure. they're like, oh, Vladka's doing this, he's doing that, it's, who cares? But literally, like, you want Kansas City to do well, guys. Like, Kansas City is, like, setting the standard and stuff. If they mm. have a good coach and they're doing well, we want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, even though, like, you know, as an Angel City fan, I'm like, Freya, like, so you're good over there. Like, why can't you be good what for us? <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. So, like, I'm excited about what Kansas City are doing. And Vladko, like, good for him. 
um you know but the she believes we have we're, we have emma hayes like as our coach like we have we're, we're fine we're fine guys don't worry don't worry about what block yeah. doing but yeah it's is, is emma hayes debuting at the she believes or? not not yet She's this because, summer right this, yeah like this, in June, this or, summer yeah, which is yeah. super exciting yeah. you couldn't have found like probably a better coach at this at this mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. but um you know She's obvious. I think she is giving her ideas and stuff it to seems like, Twilight it Kilgore seems like, and stuff like yeah. that. And I, psh, I can't wait. Honestly, like this is a sidebar. The U.S. Women's National Team played Japan at the same time that Arsenal play, and so I'm actually finding it really difficult <laughs> to figure out what I'm going to do on that day. It's going to be like that SpongeBob meme where like what both eyes are. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because like... I'm so excited for the U.S. Women. I really am, and so yeah. But that like bleeds into the NWSL and stuff too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of soccer coming, which is good, but Yay. then also the struggles of like which which games to watch, which of them First all. First world problems. <laughs> well, what can I say? First world problems. We're thinking about like what games we're gonna choose and and not. But but yeah, Kansas City up at the top. Um, what about Gotham? They're like what, what in the middle, mixed, right? Mixed bag so far. Mid table. Yeah. They're like we won last year. We could chill. You uh, know? They have. I mean, they haven't had their full. Like I think Rose Lavelle has been out. Lynn Williams has yeah. been out. Um, Mitch Purse uh, <coughs> went down. Like that was. I it's mean, still rough. I was praying because when you saw the like, she knew immediately. Like, yeah. She went down. It was crushing. Um, that was in the Portland game, I think. Um, yeah. And. Her face, like it was like almost just like when she said, "I'm out, I'm out." I was like, Ooh, "That's yeah. not good." You know, um, when something yeah. bad happens. Gotham is a team that I was rooting for because wow. I was the signings, to, right? Huh? Yeah, all the signings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, massive signings. You know, bringing in Rose, stacking up. bringing yeah. in Rose Lavelle, I, like yeah. bringing in Tierna Davidson, bringing in Emily Sonnet, and Mitch, after having that that massive crazy win. run to the to the, yeah. the the final last year and midge bring, brings um the vibe and she's just like a you know she's really expected she's like mm-hmm. someone that can take over a game mm-hmm. she's like sophia smith level mm-hmm. like, yeah. you know the 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 individual things that she can do not a lot of people can do and yeah. you saw that in the, the <clears throat> championship game last year she took like she had a, an, an incredible run that that you know ended up um contributing to her mvp mm-hmm. of, of that mm-hmm. game but that's going to be a huge loss for them um i think they still have enough talent and enough depth to overcome that. Um, I'm rooting for this team because I want more teams to take that and be like, yo, we should, we should do that. We should be aggressive. We, we should bring in some like three, four, five stars on our team. And the, the league is still small enough. I mean, we're talking about expansion, still 12 teams. You can still stack up your, your, your roster. Um, I don't know how they, the, the salary cap stuff, I don't understand. It's not like, I almost said, as easy to understand as MLS. Like, MLS is already, like, you know, like, crazy. Like, and this, uh, NWSL is a little bit more, they're less transparent with, like, how things work. How things work, yeah. Um, I was trying to figure it out and do the math in my head. It's like, if these players are, like, how, who's getting paid what? And, like, I don't know. So, um, if, it, if they can figure it out, if they can do some, you know, creative um, uh, bookkeeping. Move the then numbers. I think, yeah, then I think the, the rest of the league, there's, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for the, for the rest of the league to kind of try that to and be more aggressive. Yeah. So I, I agree with that. I think that's, that's, like, a really good point that, like, you want to see teams almost like, you're like, okay, yeah, we won, and now we're going to make it even tougher for you yeah, to beat yeah. us. Right. I love what Yale Averbush did. I thought it was, like, super just different for the league, like, for somebody to be so aggressive with it. And almost like – you guys remember when Miami did the decision back in the day um, with LeBron James LeBron. and Bosch? Yeah. And, yeah. It felt like that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to bring in all these stars and create a super team, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Not and I two, feel, not three, it, not five, <laughs> not six. <laughs> and and what, what it does, too, is it's like – it makes everybody look at you as a target, mm-hmm. as somebody that you want yeah. to take down a little bit. And like we're doing, like we're talking about this from like a fun sports pr- perspective. Like you know, I'm not a competitive I'm not side of things. Yeah, a competitive side. And so, yeah, I mean, I was definitely like Gotham. You can't lose a game. You cannot lose a game. If you make a decision like that, you have got to be good from the beginning. Yeah. And so we're all watching Gotham. But um, I think they were saying that like I had read something the other day that by the time like the end of 2024, they will have 16 teams. And so mm-hmm. expansion team, or like they're going to expand to 16. Where would you guys want new teams yeah, to be located I, at? I, I, I was, you guys think about that? I wanted to talk about that because with the She Believes being in Atlanta, a lot of people are like, yo, like Can this is the next place we yeah. need to have. Because you've seen what Atlanta United has done in a relatively short 
period of time. They're selling out the Superdome like regularly, not every time, but like to the point where you know they've had multiple seventy thousand plus crowds at that stadium. I think if we can see a sizable crowd this weekend at the She Believes Cup, I think they're bringing. Are they bringing the U.S. Soccer headquarters to Atlanta? Is that yeah. is that right? So that's going to be a thing. Like I feel like. Atlanta has to be on on the on list. The list. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's talks about. Bo- I mean, and and you, you look at the USL Super League. You have to consider that as well. That because mm. them coming in at a Division One level, um, I think is uh, provides. It, it's going to make it competitive, but also like I feel like NWSL teams are going to be wary about like okay, you know. This USL team is here. Are we sure we want to put a, 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 a team there as well? Mm. Like, do we think two teams can fit in the same market? Mm. Um, I think there already are a couple. I think um, uh, Wash, like DC, the capital is getting one, and then Brooklyn is, is getting one as mm, well. So yeah. we're going to see if, if that works. I would be, um, uh, I would love to see a Boston team as well, just because, okay. I don't know. Like Boston. Well, Boston is like a massive sports, sports city. city. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you want right, that. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Atlanta for sure has to be on the list. Um, what about Philly? Philly, uh, Philly for sure. Philly, yeah. I feel like Philly, another like iconic sports city. You think of sports cities, yeah. Um, and, and insane fans like. That would like, be so cool. Yeah. What about Philly. Vegas? Do you think that that has a capacity? Ooh. Vegas is an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. Because it I, has the people, the environment, <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I, it's not like the uh, for a lot of reasons because it's very new when it comes to sports cities. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, the the, the Raiders it's like are mo- starting to grow. Yeah, the Raiders move there. The A's, the Oakland mm-hmm. A's, are going to okay. move there for baseball. Uh, they Las have Vegas the Aces. the Aces. The Aces are you know doing They're great ru- They run Las Vegas. Let's just let's right. just say, yeah. say yeah. that. When it comes to soccer, the Vegas Lights always brought it has brought in a good crowd. Um, mm-hmm. I remember when uh, when a friend played out there when I went to go see see him play the stadium. Even though it's an old baseball stadium, like the crowd shows up and they they. Their, their fan supporter group, they, they don't stay quiet all game. They're screaming all game. Mm-hmm. They, haven't, they haven't had the best seasons, but they, they, there's a quiet soccer uh, soccer hood right there in Vegas that loves their soccer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so from, a, from, a youth, from a youth soccer perspective, there's, there's a lot of you know, uh, youth soccer like tournaments and, and, and club teams out there that yeah. are, are doing some, some, some big things too. So I don't know. Vegas is, is always interesting because I don't think of it as a sports city just because – we didn't grow up with it being a sports city, mm-hmm. but now it is. And yeah. the Raiders uh, are doing their thing. Like all the teams are doing things. So it'll be a fun environment. Plus, like as a tourist, you you you're gonna go want to see it because Vegas doesn't mm-hmm. do anything small. They do everything big, yeah. from creating their own stadiums to like knocking on casinos, casinos to make more stadiums for whatever sport. So it'll be great. They probably make their second uh, all women uh, soccer stadium. And, they're not gonna Could, go small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Speaking. What about Miami? Oh, ping. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's think big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's we, go we, to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this when we were doing the World Cup um, venues conversation about mm. where the final should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, being from LA, like that was our obvious bias, number one choice. And when it was released that you know LA is probably not gonna host it for whatever reasons. Um, we we talked about you know okay Potential. it's gonna be Dallas or New Jersey what the like what is going on like you know <laughs> and so I think Atlanta and Miami were the two um, other cities that were like and and maybe did we say Portland or Seattle I don't remember but um, those were two that came up that were like yo like these are underrated cities and they they ended up getting um, rewarded they got semifinal matches I think semifinals and then Miami also got the third place final um, yeah or third place match so those two like. If, I mean, Miami has a history in uh, soccer even before Inter Miami, before you know, with with Miami Fusion, Fusion, Fusion right? Tampa, yeah. Um, and then uh, Miami FC also they have some crazy stuff I saw um, going on with them for the US, their U.S. Open Cup game. I saw a couple players were betting on the uh, their own game and they got caught. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, wow. You gotta bet on yourself though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Not literally. I, 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 I'm all for the kind of shenanigans and the the vibes and the atmosphere that comes with Miami. And I mean, you know, that could be so fun. If like imagine somehow tying in with the inner Miami buzz that's going on, whether directly with the club or indirectly by just forming a team there. Um, it would be think- hard though, just because of the the massive like pool that inner Miami has with Messi. 
you have to bring somebody of his caliber caliber in the women's game. Mateus? Yeah, to like hey, even like Mateus. even to like Cavalier shine because I feel like that Miami team because of Messi, Suarez, mm-hmm. like all those guys, it's just so much. Like people are just. It's so big, y'all. Yeah. Like when I was there, I kid you not. As soon as I got off the plane, like my me, the Messi effect is hard and heavy. Like really? everywhere I went. A Messi jersey, whether it was Argentina, Barcelona, or the Inter Miami, just Messi is everywhere out there. It's, It'll be it's hard. insane. Like I, I, I loved it though, like because I'm a huge Messi fan. Um, but I feel like Julio brings up a really good point. It's going to be really hard to to, to shy away from yeah. that. I feel like everyone's off of a Messi high right now out there. That like. It's unbeatable. Yeah. It's unbeatable. If, you, if you're buying Inter Miami games, you can't afford to go any other games, anyways. Uh, They're so expensive. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Okay, so no Miami. Maybe, maybe not maybe for now. Miami. Not yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe not I feel yet. Like, yeah. I feel like that just from a location, from, I mean, it's very soccer. Like, like uh, there's a big soccer community in, yeah. in Miami. Um, you know, we've seen <laughs> a bunch of different events uh, um, go that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, do really well and there's a lot of you know people playing pickup and, and all this stuff in Miami so but just from like a marketing and co- competition yeah I, I you know it's it's it, it'll be difficult but I think it, it, it's possible yeah. too because it's its own separate thing and I think they can not um, it, it could even be a benefit too because it's like yeah. people caring about soccer and then maybe if Inter Miami can can do like a women's team or something like that. You know, they can maybe. Uh, Beckham, are you hearing this? Yeah. David, are you listening? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let women's him know. Women's team. I know he's he's in our DMs, so he does he does pay attention. <laughs> We're gonna have to, to hit to him pod, up. Yeah. So. Spice Girl know. owning the team. I'm for it. Ooh. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Imagine I love that. Be crazy. I have one more. Hear me out. Okay. Just because I love the city and I think that it it could do well is maybe Austin. I know that they have the MLS team. I was literally thinking. Yeah, I, I think Austin. It's just such such a good vibe. Like it's like a small big city at the same yeah. time. Mm-hmm. They have people that really care about the sport. Um, they already have the MLS team there. I feel like Austin would be a good place yeah. maybe too to put like a women's team. I know that we already have Houston, but Texas is massive. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't like take away from any of that. But like that would what, be my other like hear yeah. me out. Yeah. Like I think Austin yeah. would be cool. Yeah. That would be a great city. Yeah. Like cause, like when I went last year to go watch Austin FC play like. Yeah, they they have it's a fun. It, it's, it's it's fun. It's a great city. It's, it's a, a great it's a, city. It's a really yeah. fun city. And there's yeah. a lot of great things to do. So, but especially with like where the stadium's at, it, like everybody's just focused on soccer because mm-hmm. there's not much to do around there. But mm-hmm. like, it's a great soccer city. Like the fans were there early. I'm like, go home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Come yeah. back later. Yeah, and I think what Austin FC has done with they kind of f- followed this expansion team blueprint. You know. Atlanta United, LAFC, Nashville, mm-hmm. um, uh, some of these newer teams have kind of put together. Yeah. They had a really good season that helped as well. Their their inaugural year last year, not so much, but um, I think the the soccer. It, it's like one of those cities, like you know, Portland. Um, uh, I can't think of any other, but like those, like kind of like you know, like you said, small small cities, small with but mighty. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That have that aren't like you know top five. Um, cities that when you uh, might think of when you think of the United States, but if it's like you have a friend from you know South America or Europe or mm-hmm. Asia or wherever, and they're like, "Hey, I'm coming to visit the U.S. What what's what are some cities that I should visit?" I think Austin would be one of those like you know on the short list of cities. Like these are the like obviously you know Seattle, the, Portland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big the you, you want to hit the big ones, but then it's like okay, if you have time, you got to check out Austin. You got to check out. Uh, Pacific Northwest you got to check out you know maybe maybe some stuff in the Midwest too like mm-hmm. I feel like it, it falls into that category of like you know yeah hi- not hidden but like g- gems outside of the you know the conscious like the, the the main consciousness yeah so, so. agreed 110 yeah. percent yeah I'm excited for the NWSL to expand expand it means that things are going well mm-hmm. I remember reading something about like you know, the earlier versions of the NWSL or women's soccer here in America always kind of folded around the fourth year. And so they've gotten to the fourth year and now they're looking to get bigger and better, which is so, so important for the game here. So I'm gassed, like wherever you put the team, put it in Wyoming, I'm coming, I'm there, you know, <laughs> we whatever, we, whatever we gotta do, we're here, you know? So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, and build more stadiums because 
that's that's also so exciting cool. yeah, yeah it's super dope to see them have their own like to dominate their own space to know that they um, I was reading the backstory behind the Kansas City team and how like they used to like change in the parking lot and have to like struggle to the extent of like not having anywhere to change is kind of yeah, crazy it is it's yeah. insane and it doesn't feel good to not have your own home your own space so to see them from going to have to change in the parking lot to be changing in the locker that they have, mm -hmm. dang. Have you guys seen the lockers, by the way? Like the... Yeah, it's the, the like the tour yeah, around yeah, the stadium. Yeah, like it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's nice. It's yeah. really nice. So yeah. shout out to First them. Class. Yeah. Hopefully that yeah. Kansas continues. City, if you guys are watching, if you guys want to get us out there to like do a tour or something, like we wouldn't mind coming and like <laughs> touring and seeing what you guys are about. You know, Have some barbecue. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little doing a little TikTok, you know, <laughs> showing people what they're missing out on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd be down. We wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't mind. Uh, Maybe that'll be the first stadium we actually go to. I know we we're, we're so we're like just completely all talk because yeah we are not all talk y'all y'all not all talk no 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 we <laughs> are for sure like we've been talking. Since, <laughs> since like the winter, yeah. since like December maybe of like, you know, we're, we're, what are our away days going to be this year as like a team? Um, and we're talking. And we've gone know. to... I haven't been to I <laughs> we haven't know. even been to Carson. I went to, I went to San Jose, uh, going to Portland. You're on yeah. personal vibes. So you're, yeah, so you're not all talking. Like, no, no, yeah. I mean, he's like... He's like, yeah, I'm going. No, he uh, goes, but he'll probably remember like maybe 30%. Mm, 30 hey, I'm having, don't 20 get mad at me because I'm having fun. It's 20% like, yeah, of but I'm enjoying myself. That's not, that's like, we're, we're talking about of like, you know, experiencing, you know, what, like just from like a full, like us three. As a pod. Us three yeah. as a podcast. And then he goes, all right, yeah, I'm going to this one, I'm going to this one, I'm going to this one. I was like, yo. And we're like, like, okay. Hey, Atlanta's coming up. I'm going to be out there. Um, yeah. That's planning to go to Seattle. Memorial yeah, Day more than welcome to follow. Like, I'm gonna be yeah. so real. <laughs> if the next time I see y'all, you and you guys have not been to at least <laughs> Snapdragon, I'm going. Yeah. I'm gonna fight Honestly. all of y'all. No, we're come on, we drive do down to San Diego. Yeah, it's, an, it's like two true. hours away. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah we can yeah, do that. that. I've been saying that. Take yeah. the train true. there. That, take the train back. I'm with that. Can yeah. we talk about that stadium though? Because I already, I've already kind of not bad mouth San Diego, but I've, I've. I've mentioned that it's like it's like you're in like a Truman Show type place where it's like you know everything is sunshine everything is like uh -huh. you know like it, it feels fake like and when you go to that stadium I've been there I think two or three times mm -hmm. now it's crazy to get in and out of if you don't take you have to take the the the, the whatever trolley or tram or um, whatever public transportation to get because the one time I tried Ubering there it's like they the pickup is right at the front of the stadium mm. and it's like everything bottlenecks and dude like it was it was it was nuts like mm. we had people offering like i saw people offering i'll give you 400 dollars right now if you cancel your ride and and and, and the guy like it was crazy That's intense. Yeah, it was wild um what? that stadium too is like there's a lack of covering on it and it feels way bigger than it is mm. i mean it's it's pretty big it's like a thirty thousand. yeah um but it feels like because maybe it's not a soccer specific stadium mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, the bank is or even um, Dignity Health, um, it just feels so like big, open and like big. massive. And yeah. I think it's really nice and it's cool that they fill out that stadium pretty regularly, but I'm not a huge fan of like the overall like atmosphere at that stadium. Yeah, maybe <clears> it's <throat> like if you grab snapdragon and you dropped it into another city that's not as beautiful as san diego it probably would be like you wouldn't like it as much because mm -hmm. now that you're saying that i will find any reason to drive down to san diego and go yeah, to snapdragon yeah. but it's mostly because san diego is just beautiful you want to go and to san diego fun right, yeah right, right. but maybe it's not that the actual stadium mm -hmm. that it's i'm city. loving it's yeah. the city yeah. that i'm yeah. liking yeah because yeah. It's, it's always it's like don't get me wrong it's, I have a great time every time I go to San Diego. It's beautiful, but like uh, their baseball stadium there, um, Petco Park, is yeah. in the middle of the Gaslamp District. It's beautiful. It's 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 so cool to like walk and see. Like you're in the middle of the city, right. and there's a stadium there. That that one is a little bit out of the way. It's it just feels different. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Something's off. It's it's like it's nice. It's it's cool. Like the atmosphere is all right. There's there's good food options. Um, but there's just something about it, like I don't know, like even yeah. when we're like when you're there during the day, it's just really hot, so and you, it's hard to find coverage because there's no like 
there's overhang, nothing over it, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Um, but I don't know. There's something about that stadium that I don't know. It doesn't fully click for me. Like it, like um, I mean, I've been to Austin Stadium. Austin Stadium, like I went in, I was like, yeah, this place, this place. Rules. Yeah, it's beautiful. Austin the, Stadium. Austin Stadium is top tier. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. in the middle so. of residential uh, residential area, which is yeah. weird. Like <laughs> right, like, and, like, but that one is yeah. in the kind of middle, the middle of nowhere too. But yeah. like when you walk into the stadium, it's like, yo, like this is this, this is, is nice. This is nice. And they got a top golf right next to it. Like yeah, and you got the top golf down the street. Um, what, yeah. what else do you yeah. want? Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Like I think. Um, uh, as much as you know, as, and I will go there. You know, I think we're probably going to go. I'm, I'm actually going to San Diego, not for soccer this weekend, but um, we'll probably go there for the the San Diego Wave game. Let's um, plan it out now. Now, um, yeah. so <laughs> this is a now. more of a, this is more of like me on a Julio thing, where like I'm going, y'all can come with me if you want. Um, but yeah, we need to do like a full on trip because we were talking about Nashville. We were talking about what was the one that we were supposed to go to. Um, we were like uh, full on sold on it. The play, we had a player on, and he was like, and we're like, yeah, for a book, it, we're going. No, 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 no. Portland, no Portland, Colorado. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado. Colorado. I'm still down. <laughs> we've got multiple guests. <laughs> yeah, about um, for Colorado, for Colorado, and so, um, yeah, maybe maybe we can get a Colorado. You, you guys should. Okay, so here's here's the plan. So we're, I'm gonna help you guys out. I'm be your travel agent. Okay, okay so let's, after let's this, hear it. we're let's also hear it. we're gonna get a little piece of paper and figure it out. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you, you you have to. And then at the end of the season, what we should do is reconvene and kind of like rank the stadiums and like give in like an idea to like the viewers of like what, what was good, what yeah. wasn't. Rank them a little mm -hmm. bit because I'm feeling like now I need to go to more stadiums so I can say which ones I like more. Right. Okay. You know? I'm, I'm going to stop like you right there enough. because you're dropping free game right now and I don't want anyone else to see this and, and copy it. <laughs> oh. So this is a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> let's um, talk offline. Let's, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. But no, 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 go ahead, go <laughs> ahead, and then talk about the, the different stadiums and, and, and all that because that's I think something that's really important um, and and Because that's too. a part of the the game day experience is so fun and like when you go to different stadiums, obviously you're gonna get different vibes. You mm -hmm. can talk about like you know what's better and what's not. I'm yeah. like now I'm thinking about San Diego and I'm like you know what it isn't all that. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's yeah. not all that. Yeah. You know? We are it's spoiled. Though. We are spoiled because I went to Portland. For the, for the media, I uh, had a media pass, and I was like, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> they send you all the way up to the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right, you were yeah. telling me. Fifty million us. stairs, and like they just have like one tray of food and ice cream, snow sodas. I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey man, this guy, like he. Um, Every time we go to the press box, like that's the first thing he goes, yeah. What kind of food they got? Like, cause, and then <laughs> I rate which you is, on that. Which is which is yeah. not. I don't blame you. It's <laughs> valid. Yeah, it's one hundred percent valid. SoFi had it proper. SoFi had it proper. Um, yeah, they had the little ice cream. And then the the brownie tray where he uh, Twelman's Taylor Twelman swooped uh, his, the last brownie for him, and he's that uh, beef. That was the last <laughs> row. He already had. He already had. His that was takes it. Are, yeah, he, his he, takes he are stupid. The by the way, <laughs> <laughs> his takes are hella stupid. Like mediocre player, <laughs> and I took it personal. Yeah, right, right. And he took my brownie. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I gotta go because I gotta be on TV." Like, Nobody cares, bro. Like I just oh, want my copy. Yeah, like oh, stupid little comb over. Right, that, that's that's a little bit of content that you yeah. guys should probably do. Ranking yeah, bring press boxes it, yeah. because some of the places they're. They are um, not yet. Yeah. This is a story for another day because I'm like, what is this? Yeah. This is not enough. Mm -hmm. What is it? I actually want to say that Snapdragon did not have great. Food. They gave us like hummus. Press, and that's it. In the, in the press box? In the press box, mm. just hummus. And I was just like, this is Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah, so. You would think. So, yeah, this time I'm going to better. Portland, no press box. Going to straight no. fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fan. Fan. Yeah, fan unprofessional. Experience. You're on your unprofessional. Unprofessional, yeah. yeah like, business. No, show. but like, uh, yeah, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I, I, had, I had one beer because I was just so over it. And then, like, literally, like, literally, I've done it in other stadiums, I have a beer with my press pass. But right there, somebody was like, no, no, no. I'm like, and luckily my friend was there. I was like, no, it's his. I was just holding it for him. Dude. <sighs> they, they do not I, play. I that can't, is if, so funny. Yeah, and if I speak, I I'll, I'll get in trouble. Um, so I just won't. But yeah, there's don't been do times it. where I've had to look at him and be like, what, the, what are you doing? Relax. Like, <laughs> Unprofessional. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Like. <laughs> Not that professional, not unprofessional, just not that professional. Not professional. So Semi-professional. No, but it's because like taking risks. No, because uh, you gave me the title of director of vibes, so I have to be with the people. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I, I bring that upon myself that I have to make friends everywhere I go <laughs> and just yeah, sure, have a drink with them and enjoy life. Yeah, yeah. I could never. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, bri bridge is like now it's like strictly during during the match. Uh, I have mm -hmm. my you know my suit and tie on. Mm -hmm. After the match is, is a different story. So yeah. tie comes off. Right. right everything right. comes no, we off. Did, we, we did Bobby good for the out. Angel City <laughs> opener, Bridge. We did good for the Angel City opener. We we, we said hi to everybody oh, yeah, after we, the game. We, we did our rounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We walked around. Angel but you guys City. weren't there, press like on your. No, 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 no. We, no. we were, we were watching doing, the game. We mm -hmm. yeah, we mm -hmm. got tickets. Um, shout out to John and Gina. They sent us tickets, and then we went. We showed up. We didn't go to our seats, but be, because we were walking around saying hi to right. everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and everywhere we would go, someone would stop us, and then um, obviously this guy would get recognized, and he would. It was say your hi friends, though. Like, I know. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> One of our friends was like, yeah. "Hey, are you the beatbox?" I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> wait up! Uh, um, it's too early for a beatbox." You know? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Angel City, yeah, it's always a vibe. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's something that we also mentioned is the vibes are always there for Angel City, mm. but we're reaching a point now where it's like. There needs to be something other than the. There needs to be steak in the pan, not just sizzle. Right. You know? so, like, right. As y'all can tell for the first twenty minutes, I'm not the biggest NWSL fan. <laughs> didn't say a word. I, but I'm like, glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. I was I gonna know. say something. But like just watching the game that day, I was like, all right. It was just like, it's like pulling your hair worthy because they would like come out the back playing really well. Then you get to the like in front of the goal and they want to do seven more passes for no reason I'm it like it was just the executing it, like they were yeah, not it was so finishing. bad they, the, but, the, from a finishing perspective that's been their weakness I think oh yeah. my. since Chris and Press went mm -hmm. down they haven't had someone that's like a clinical Dominating finisher at that, yeah. they, I mean they have players who can do it but, like I think Claire Emsley is, is capable of doing it. I think Sydney LaRue Lur is capable of doing it but it's from a consistency basis getting served in the boxes right now we're, well, all we're doing is running down the wing because we have, we have quick the wingers. The wing, like. Running down the wing, sending a cross in, pinballing is something. We lead the league in corners every single year because we just, like, try to sh send something in and, like, like you know, Jesus take the wheel, like, whatever, and then the ball will, will go out and we'll have a corner. Mm -hmm. Sponsored by C Cedar sinai It's become a running joke. <laughs> you know, that, that's the greatest investment of all time from Cedar sinai because we're getting 10, 12 corners, corners a game. Sheesh. And, like maybe two of those will have a threat on yeah um and i think um actually one of the i think was it um sydney's goal that came off a corner um almost like i feel like a lot of our goals come off of set piece opportunities yeah yeah where it's like something happens and there's like a scrum and you know like Boom. and all of a sudden Naked you know somebody sticks a foot out yeah. and, the, and the ball goes in yeah, yeah, yeah. which is great and i think we won a lot of games like but those that should last be like year. the second third goal exactly not the first exactly. i'm trying to see something from open play yeah. right yeah some no, bangers. Yeah. like where are our bangers there's no idea the last going, one was no idea going forward there's really no idea going forward yeah who was the last one? Was it um, June Endo had the one in the opening game last year that got called back on some, on yeah. some terrible yeah. yes. VAR stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Alyssa had a good goal. Alyssa, before. yeah, Alyssa, Alyssa's her first, first goal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when she yeah. cut inside, and I think um, she, she's. I feel like maybe because we saw it with Kristen Press as well, where it's like they were keying in on Kristen Press and made it very hard for her. And it's like, oh, Kristen isn't scoring goals, but mm -hmm. it's you because- You can't have one player exactly. that's kind yeah. of like yeah. relied upon. I feel right. like it's on every line, there's one player that we're like, do it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it was Kristen for a while. Now it's like Sydney or yeah. Alyssa or whoever. Yeah. Midfield, it's Amandine Henri. Can you cook, can you cook a meal? It's like, listen, she can't just do it by herself. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you have, Sarah and Paige, who like I, they they're amazing, but my goodness, I know they are tired after the game because mm -hmm. they got a lot of stuff it's, to do. Like they really do. You see them go down, and you're like, oh my god, like I hope, I hope that <laughs> yeah, it can't happen. The, the Paige, Paige goes down, down like lot. four times, five times a game, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, like Paige, can we no. please, like, like this is like, like uh, no disrespect to the center backs that we have. Like if if Paige goes out or Sarah goes out, like we're cooked. We're like we're yeah. super cooked. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, um, and yeah. it's it's. <laughs> it's. I. I still want to be optimistic. I don't want to give up. But from what I've seen so it's been far, three games. I know. No, he gives up every year. No, gives up every year. I told up. Sarah I, when we had Sarah I Gordon on. I told her I was like, "Yo, you guys were, were testing my 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 faith because yeah. like when we're last year, it took us ten games to to figure it out. And it shouldn't towards take the end, ten, should not no, take you ten matches to to, to figure out what what, what, you're, what you got going I'm telling on. Telling you, so. got to put Bay FC on the waiting list because. No, you can't be like, you're ready to jump shit. Oh, I'm jumping. I, I'm, I'm not going to jump. Yeah. I'm not going to. Look at me. 
I, the I, vibes I, do look good yeah, over that in jacket kind of looks a but little hard. But they also hard. only have one game, one win too, and they blew a lead um, in yeah. their home opener. Well. I need a reason they got to their go own to the stuff bay. going on. Yeah, they, like, they got their stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, that jacket is hard though. But yeah, Angel City definitely, you know. We're, we're rooting for you. Yeah. We are. We're, rooting, we're, we're definitely rooting for you for sure. Yeah. Mid mid season, we're gonna be in there. I know it. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's, let's go to the bay again. Remember though, this moment. Yeah. We're that sure. Oakland roots trip we did as a as as a oh, group. Oh, we went there. That was our first. Uh, yeah, that was, that was okay. our first. Okay. Hey, good job. Yeah. 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 But that was before. That was before <laughs> we were talking about that was going what, somewhere. That, that was before. before I even joined. She just came on the trip. I know. She. Oh, you did. He was like, I'm just coming. No, I was invited. Thank you very much. She was sitting in. She was sitting in, and you know. No, it's because we. We had that trip, and then on our way back, this guy lost his voice from that trip. So then I had yeah, to. I'll be having in. too much fun. I gotta was that really? Was yeah, that? Yeah, that was we went, the reason. First of all, we, we, we went to the Sem- we went to Bay Area. <laughs> and I remember him losing his voice, but yeah, was that that? It was yeah, that trip. Low key, oh, that's kind of trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, not a. Yeah, we got home. Uh, okay, I don't want to talk yeah. about that. But it was it was a great trip. It was a lot of fun. Three um, in the morning, coming back was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, we're, we're running low on time. We, we went on a million different. Real quick. Um, a couple more things. Uh, <laughs> right. To close things out, how, yeah. um, we what we did with the MLS um, preview that we did was, you know, one bold prediction. Do you guys have uh, uh, a bold prediction hot take for, for the 2024 NWSL season? Angel City making it to the playoffs. There we go. Boom. That's not a bold take. That's like, not a bold prediction. Like half the league you. makes it makes it to the playoffs. Mm. I'm trying to think of one. Give me a sec. While Bridget, do you have you something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Julio, you have one. I know you should. Yeah, um, What's your bold take? Portland to win the championship. <laughs> no, you have one. You shared it with. You shared it. I forgot it to be completely honest. Oh, <laughs> he copied pasted from somewhere. I know. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, I guess um I guess I'll I'll go first. So I think um uh I said this for MLS, so this is gonna be like just only half of and I don't think it's even that much of a hot take for, for um NWSL, but I think the um the uh, attendance numbers this year are gonna break like like significant records um, compared to the last few, because I mean it's always been on the rise. Last year, I think set set new records across. I think that the the league averaged like ten thousand per per game. So I think right now we're around like twelve thousand up for the first few weeks. So I think we're gonna get into that thirteen fourteen thousand mark by the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's like not really that much of a hot take because you know things are on the rise. But I will say that um, the new tournament that um, was introduced, which we didn't even talk about, the NWSL versus League MX, I think that's gonna start. And then the the Concacaf Champions, um, um, which is coming up, I don't know this this year or it's gonna be at the end of this year. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think those two particular uh, competitions are going to start something um, across women's soccer like like more international like they're already doing it in 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 europe the the champions league has been a thing there but i think um and then the club world cup is going to come i think i want to see more international like i want to because there's always the talk of is the still the best league in the world like a lot of people say that but is the is the wsl better like from what i've seen it's it's hard it's hard to tell yeah so i think the international competition is going to just sharpen everybody's um i i want to see more of it and i think it's going to be a huge um huge thing um um, when it comes to just the future of the sport yeah i know i knew it was it was tough to do in the beginning because the leagues don't coincide like with the schedules but before there was a um i think it was like the original like what the challenge cup was before but it was like they changed it or something but it used to be the uh, NWSL teams would play against some of the WSL teams. When I tell you, like, that was, like, the love of my life, when you, like, watch Chelsea play yeah. um, it was, it was Washington called, Spirit. It was or, called something. I forget what it was called. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. It was amazing. The Champions Cup or something like that. Yeah, something like that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, more of that. Yeah. More of that. Yeah. I want to mm-hmm. see that. I want to see the crossover. And you're absolutely correct about um, Liga, um, Liga Max and, and the NWSL crossing over because, like, the Mexican women's national team was so good in the women's gold cup. It surprised me. I was like, I'm not paying enough attention to mm-hmm, this team. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them play in that league. And mm-hmm. I'm like, genuinely, if this is as good as their, these are their best players and they're phenomenal. 
I wonder what the other players are like in that league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they deserve more eyes. So I'm super excited about that. I think the crossovers are going to yeah. be insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of Mexican American players are deciding to play in Mexico post yeah. staying here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, like a big part of that is, you know, they looked at the vibes of the, the national team and they're like, yo, man, like yeah, 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 maybe yeah. like Diana Ordonez is like, is, is a famous one and we could use like a, a, like a striker like that on the, on the current team. So, I mean, we're starting to see that now. Like you've seen it in on the men's side where it's like, you have these dual nationals, like, you know, highly touted, yeah. like, okay, making mm -hmm. making a decision. Now mm -hmm. you're seeing it on the women's side. So yeah, but I think I, that's something I'm super excited for. And I think it's going to be, it's good. A lot of people are hyped on it and, and psyched, but I think it's going to be a lot bigger than, than what people. And this year they have the all-star game as well, right? I'm not sure. They they they've been talking about that. Uh, they did like the skills challenge at the um, uh, the championship last year in San Diego. I don't know if they're going to do. I have to. I'd have to double check. But hopefully, they, they, that'd be awesome if, if they're they're doing an all star. Yeah. They should. They, there's no reason why not. I'm trying to think of a bold prediction. It's probably not that bold, but one player that I've been really like excited about that started in the league this season is Ali Setnor. From the, the mm -hmm. Utah Royals, she yeah, is a, um, a rookie. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she hit double figures this season, yeah, genuinely. She, like, she looks sturdy. Like, she looks so good. Mm -hmm. She already has two goals as a rookie, you mm -hmm. know, and I just feel like you just get a feeling with a player that she's going to absolutely bang. And she has one of the best coaches that could teach her how to bang in goals. <laughs> yeah. Just got A-Rod for a coach, you know, and A-Rod was the business when she was playing. So, yeah, I think, like, it's not that bold of a take, but I guess my, like, shout would be, like, Ali Sentinor is going to get into double figures and she's going to be the rookie of the season and all that kind of stuff. Like, I just think, like, she's nailed on for it. She's amazing. She looks great. So, yeah. What do you think? I agree. <laughs> I concur. I concur, doctor. <laughs> You the expert. <laughs> <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Whatever you said. Hey, sometimes you just gotta agree with, with the correct people. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Any <laughs> any other uh, bold bold takes before you wrap up? Um, no, I think the crossover is exciting. I think we're gonna see more. I think for me, what I'm like noticing is I think we're gonna see more international players coming to the NWSL. I mean, we've seen. Lacey Santos just signed over to Washington Spirit from Col and she's from Colombia. Um, from Bay FC, we have Dana Castellanos, mm. um, and then also that, and that's like on the Latino side. But we also have a lot of African American players coming out and doing their thing. Um, that year are, are even coming from like Europe and and you know joining NWSL and naturally just like just showing who they are. And I think that's what we, we need in NWSL so that they can kind of like level up in their yeah. playing game. Yeah, and Houston. Houston also just. Sign someone from PSG. I forget her name. Um, um, it's yeah. it's escaping me, but she's yes. she's a very good player, yeah, high, super high, experienced. Yeah, yeah. Level, I did see that. Player. Yeah, I don't know uh, she's a name. Swiss international. I don't know why her name is. Yeah, um, it's escaping me now. But but, yeah. but I mean that because I think um, Anubisa was a very American league, and now the the more kind of European, mm -hmm. African, mm -hmm. South American, mm -hmm. you know, Central American mm -hmm. players that they can come in. It's um, gonna be crazy. I love yeah. it. I love <laughs> to see the diversity. Yeah. It yeah. feels more inclusive, um, and I think we're gonna see way more of that. That's my bold um, prediction, yeah. and I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Period. Yeah. I, the 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 premise of like the NWSL becoming an international league, I think, also would do a lot for its reputation, mm -hmm. um, and like you know. As as more national teams are stepping their games up too, you know, I think it's it's yeah. it's, it, it's going to be good for the. And US I mean, we've already seen it. Too. We've already seen it with Chiwingo. We've already seen it with Oshawala and, and Rachel Kundanaji, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, you know, all these big transfers. Kanu, I think from Louisville. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So ballers. Yeah, <laughs> the, the league's stepping up, and yeah. you know, it's an exciting time for it. So we're going to continue watching it um, and paying attention and what and noticing. We'll be in there. Yeah, yeah. All right. This has been great. Yeah, great. yeah this has been exciting. Good Wrap stuff, guys. Yeah, all right. We learned this a lot. Is, yeah. <laughs> Julio, yeah. do your homework. <laughs> yeah. I, I forgot he was even here for the first 25 minutes, bro. I was going to say like, something. I was like, he's not talking, but I feel like it's because maybe you're, you know. He's you shy. You know, what, I'm shy. He's so never, like cool. he's never been shy to talk. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like. It, it, it. Um, okay. This has been another episode <laughs> of the Urban Pitch Podcast, a beautiful game of life, part of the League Network. Uh, for Julio Matarosa, uh, Jessica Black. Okay. 
Richard Flores. I'm Ramsey Abushala. We'll see you all next <laughs> week.